because as I, as I continue to pour through church history, as I continue to look at um, what was actually taught in this church nearly 150 years ago, um, I want to read a couple excerpts. These are uh, from the messages that were delivered shortly after the commencement of services at 10.30 a.m., Quote, on the occasion of the dedication of the Congregational Church in Wakeman, Ohio, January 1st, 1879. So the very first sermon that was preached by a man standing in the very spot that I am now standing, these were some of the first words that were uttered here. And this was by Reverend James H. Fairchild, Doctor of Divinity, President of Oberlin College. But when our religion is self-directed, regulated by the wants of the human soul rather than the rights of God, faith degenerates into self-control, into an attempt to realize in ourselves quietness and peace and assurance. Hope turns inward and seeks support and frames and states of mind supposedly to indicate the religious life. And love loses its transparency and beauty and blessedness in the endeavor to realize and feel itself the most poignant sentence of his sermon. We need more of God and less of man in our current religious experience. Echoed here in the very spot that I'm standing almost 150 years ago. Secondly, this would have been at some point between 1.30 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. on the same day uh, at the, the opening of the church, January 1st in 1879. This was Reverend Judge, Judson Smith, excuse me, Doctor of Divinity, professor at Oberlin College. Quote, A church of Christ then is a company of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ covenanted together in His name to do His work period. It thus has a distinctive character which is always easily known and recognized. It is not a club made up of kindred spirits maintaining for its own pleasure two weekly lectures accompanied with appropriate music. It is not a lodge or a society with some one common ground of interest seeking simply the advantages of its own members. It is not a mass meeting which gathers frequently and does what it calls for attention at that moment and then resolves itself back to the elements from which it was composed. It is a society of an utterly different sort from all of this. It is an organized body with a continuous life made up of those who have chosen Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Master and have sworn to do all His will. He is the center. He is the life. The Lord of the church. It is because men are drawn to Him in this faith in penitence or in repentance that they come into the church. It is thus His body, His visible body, through which He works and manifests Himself to the world. And when we look back to the foundations of what this church was actually built on, and we ruminate on that for a second, and as I read warning after warning after warning from two of the first men to stand in this pulpit ever, I'm reminded that just like they said, we have to go back to the Bible. We have to go back to scriptures. We have to look to God. Lacey, could you put the uh, doxology up? Just that one slide real fast. When we think about what it is to be Christians, look at the far left. Look at how each line starts. Praise God, praise Him, praise Him, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When we look at those things, and we don't just stumble through the words, but we actually realize what it is to be Christians, and we realize that learned men who probably knew and forgot more about God than I will ever know, stood in the very spot where I'm standing and said, look, if you lose, if you botch on the Bible, if you turn into a social club or a society or a group of people for a common person, purpose to satisfy yourselves, it's not a church. They warned against that. Where I'm standing now nearly 150 years ago. Reverend James H. Fairchild, we need more of God and less of man in our current religious experience. Praise God those were two of the first sermons preached here. Because then we have something to look back to 
to understand where we should be going towards. If we do not understand our history, we're bound to to suffer terrible, terrible, terrible mistakes. Father God, we love you. God, what a glorious day it is. God, what a glorious time of fellowship it is. And God, as we get ready to to step into probably one of the, the, the last few sermons, God, in the book of James, the entire book of James, God, I pray that you would do a mighty work here, not just in this congregation, but in Wakeman. And Lord, as we have joy in our hearts and we look forward to the Christmas season, and we look forward to, to family and friends and, 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 and festivities. God, let us drive our eyes to the Christ child. Let us drive our eyes to the first advent of your son, your only begotten son. And let us constantly remember what is most important about this season. Christ Jesus. Let us constantly remember that outside of this season, the most important thing that we can remember is Christ Jesus. God, that we would grow in Christ's likeness. Lord, that we would look so much like Christ that people would look at us and say, there is something different about those people. When they gather together, there's something different about them. When they walk through the streets, there's something different about them. When they go about their work, or I see them at the mailbox, there's something different about them. I pray that would be found true of us, God. I pray that you would open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to your word. Dearest Lord God, it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray in accordance with your will we ask. Amen.